Well, and we're in a culture that that is driving everybody towards this idea that happiness is purchased through luxury, comfort, and ease. And we want it very fast. If you don't see results in the first two days or the first week, I'm done. That's the mentality of most people. The struggle is too real. We're not patient. We like in a world where you can Google the best restaurants around me right now. No one is patient. And for you to lose weight, for you to stop drinking, if you whatever the hell you're going through, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of time, and a lot of pitfalls, a lot of plateaus. You can hit so many fucking plateaus. If you don't know how to get around that plateau, it's not going to happen fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody wants the hack. Yeah, everybody wants the hack. There's, there is no hack, man. There's no hack. What do you think is the biggest stumbling block that most people face with this kind of journey? Honestly, is they have the woe is me mentality. It's too hard. Life isn't fair. These things in life are, are, are not easy for me. You, you, you look to your left, you look to your right, and you start to judge yourself off other people. Like, if you're a female, you're like, well, she's skinny, and she doesn't work out as hard as I do, and yeah, everything starts to corrupt your mind. You start to look around too much at other people and what they're doing, and that starts to corrupt your own dialogue. We are judging ourselves against too many fucking people. You have to judge yourself against yourself. And that's the one thing I started learning, man. This isn't a race against me and Rich Wall. This is a race against David Goggins and David Goggins alone. And once you can silence all that bullshit, all the outside interference and things that are attracting your mind to everything, you can then start to grow and realizing I'm stressed out for no reason. This is my own little race. This is my own timeline. And this is how I'm going to run it. I think that so many people are so disconnected from themselves. They're operating on autopilot. They're reacting to their environment. That's the big thing, man. And that's why it was important for me to finally realize, stop being all these fake people I used to be. Stop being afraid. There was no growth until I cut myself down to nothing, to the person I really was, the real human being. And once I found out who I really was, that's when I started growing. I was trying to build on top of a lied, fucked up foundation. You can't build a house on a fucked up foundation. So I had, to, I had to get down to the actual mineral soil of who I was, and that's when you can start real growth. And what is the role that suffering plays in that, or the willingness to suffer? It starts to peel all those layers away, all those artificial layers away. If you're willing to suffer and suffer and go back in the grind, that internal dialogue you have with yourself when you're in misery and you're uncomfortable, it's a real, scary, unfiltered, no lying dialogue between you and yourself. And people know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about when you're in a bad spot in life and your mind is saying all kind of shit. That's who you really are. That's the real you. No Rocky Balboa moments going on up there. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. you know, it's round 14. Let's come on. We got this. No, it's like, fuck this. I'm out of here, man. This is crazy. That's where the growth happens. When you're able to stay in that moment and talk to yourself, talk yourself back into the suck of wherever you're going through, and you start stripping those layers away. But as you're stripping those layers away, you're building calluses over top of shit in your mind. That's where the growth starts to happen is when you have to force yourself to stay in it. You can't, you can't leave it. Like that first 100 mile race I've talked about several times where I lost all, yeah. all everything. Still the hardest physical thing you've ever done, right? Yes, physically and mentally, because like you just said, I was unprepared for that race. No training, nope. you should just recap it. Like zero training, <laughs> zero running training. 100 miles so that you could- And it was like three days later, I'm in a 100 mile race, no training at all. And when you do that, it is stupid. But what it does, if you're not going to quit it, like you just talked about, it breaks you down to nothing. You are suffering so badly mentally and physically that all of these demons are coming up. You, and you're trying to find answers. And you're trying to find answers. It, it was like living 19 hours. It's like five years I put into 19 hours of highs and lows and pitfalls and, 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 and seeing the sun come up. And... It was like, my God, I lived five years in 19 hours. It was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. So do you find yourself chasing that now with every ultra challenge? No, because 
once you realize what you get from ultra, what you get from life, I can apply that now just by sitting here with you. You know, those tools now, I don't need to go out, even though I still do it, and go out and hammer. The hammering part is like, you know, it's like a, uh, a purging of the soul. You go out there and hammer out there. You got to do that every once in a while. You got to hammer, man. You got you to get after it. But now I figured out so many different ways and so many different tools through all of the journeys I've been through, through just growing up, man, just, just, just being mature, you know, just, just being really mature. But where do you go to? You wake up on the morning, it's cold, it's mm-hmm. wet, it's dark, you've got no cartilage in your knee, you've mm-hmm. got shitty shorts, whatever it is that's the issue today. Keep talking. <laughs> it's warm on the couch. That's your it. missus says stay in bed. That's it. It's comfy, that's it's cozy. It. You've got it. work later on. You had an argument last night, you're slightly hung over. God, I know every motherfucker ain't gonna do what I'm gonna do. So this is how you level up. That's how you level up. I know there's a whole bunch of people with that right there. That fires me up. That makes me fucking happy what you just said. That brings joy to my life right there. Why? Because I know there's so many people that have the ability and just refuse to get off that couch. Refuse to study a few more hours. Refuse to go deeper, to go further. And that's where I gain the advantage. It's so easy to be great nowadays, my friend, because most people are weak. Most people don't want to go to that extra mile. Most people don't want to find that extra because it sucks. It's miserable. It's lonely. You talk about that you were kind of, you know, lonely by yourself. I was the same way. And that used to hurt me growing up. Now I fucking thrive in that shit. That's the only place to be. To get into the class I had to get into, I had to lose 106 pounds in less than three months. So I was like, fuck that, I can't do that. I grabbed my chocolate milkshake and went back to Ecolab. I'm going back to work, man. This is my life. So in this job, you look, you know, you're looking for cockroaches, looking for rodents and stuff like that. But I don't like cockroaches too much. I hit the mother load of cockroaches. And this restaurant got full of cockroaches and rodents and everything else. And I sat there and I said, this is my life. I said, this is my life. You are exactly who the fuck, this is it. And I said, this ain't gonna be it for me. So in that restaurant, I quit my job, left my canister in that restaurant, my, my spray canister, got back in my Ecolab truck, and I went home. And I started working out like somebody, I, was, I became the most obsessed person on the planet Earth. And I was basically, I had to invent a guy that didn't exist. I had to invent a guy that can take any pain, any suffering, any kind of judgment, be called nigger, be called whatever the fuck in the world, and be able to stand in the fucking room and say, go fuck yourself. I had to build, I had to build this callous mind, and I built it through suffering. I built it through downright fucking just crushing myself. If, if it was raining outside at 3 o'clock in the fucking morning, if it was snowing, the first instinct is don't go out there and do shit. My instinct was, we got to fucking go out there. Anything that was fucking horrible in my life that I would normally say no that was inhumane to most people I had to go do it and I started callousing my mind at this point in my life and I lost the weight I lost the weight and I went back to recruiter I got into that class and I went through three Navy SEAL Hell Weeks in one year only guy to ever be in three Hell Weeks in one year to my knowledge the first one I didn't make it through the next two I did and um, that I just didn't I, I didn't stop anymore from there. And I started realizing through this, through this process that the fucking mind is what you created. And I started opening different doors that I didn't think were even there, that I didn't think even existed. And the more doors I opened up, the more I started realizing that my potential is damn near endless. And it, and it changed my whole mindset. So I went from David Goggins and I created Goggins. And that journey is a priceless journey that is hard for me to even explain to people because it sounds so quick and easy. Like I lost this weight and I went through three hell weeks and went to ranger school, went to Delta Force Selects and whatever it is. It was brutal. It's a brutal journey every fucking day. And everybody goes, well, are you happy? If anybody knows my life story and I'll try to give you a, a, just a snippet of it, where I'm at today is in front of Joe Rogan telling you my life. To get through where I became, to get through where I'm at now, there's nothing but pride I have for myself that I can't really 
I can't really show people because I have this face. I have this face that they see like, are you happy? What's wrong with you? I'm driven. I'm obsessed. And that's what you see. So you come back. Mm -hmm. You do the quarter mile. Right. You walk back home. How do you regroup? So what I did, I sat down there and I put Rocky in. I got my milkshake, put Rocky. I said, you know what? I was big time in Rocky and Platoon. Why Platoon? I love to see people who were getting beat down. And this, there's, there's scenes. There's scenes that just drove me. And people in my Hell Weeks, you know, I was in three of them, they'd always hear me singing these songs. These songs, humming these songs in torturous situations. When, you're, when everybody's quitting this fucking cold, I would be somewhere gone. Somewhere fucking gone and somewhere fucking dark as shit. There's a scene in the platoon where Elias, when Barnes shoots Elias, and you know, they think Elias is dead, and the choppers are taking off, and Charlie Sheen's asking, you know, Tom Berenger, where's Elias? Where's Elias? William Defoe. Oh, I found him back there dead somewhere. And through the woods, the Viet Cong is chasing Elias through the woods and they're shooting him in his fucking back. And all he wants to do is get to the fucking chopper. He's getting shot in his back, he's getting up, he's getting shot in his back, he's getting up. And you see this guy just fighting. I love the fucking guy who just fucking fights. And so I put these things in as reminders that you're gonna have to fucking suffer, man. This fucking point two five, man, this is, man, you're gonna have to fucking suffer to, 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 to go from this fat, insecure motherfucker to one of the best guys on the planet Earth. This journey is gonna take something that is going to be incomprehensible to most people and these different visualizations how i visualize them in my self-talk it became so nasty and dirty that i almost liked the fact that i went 0.25 so it became from being defeated to like man all right motherfucker maybe you know maybe tomorrow we can go 0.75 you know it just became this different mindset i turned negatives into positives so I would, I would take it like, who, who would even think about doing this? So I would sit on my couch saying, who at 297, who can't fucking swim that great, who's scared of the fucking water, would have the fucking balls, would have the balls to fucking man up, quit a job, and go and just put everything on himself. So it's how I started talking to myself and putting myself in a whole different category and that would fuel me the next day and I just kept using that as fuel and fuel. No one would do this shit. No one would do this shit. You're the baddest motherfucker around. You're the baddest motherfucker ever lived. And I had to, I just kept fueling me with the, with, with the right kind of message that I needed to hear that I was never telling myself. And through time, it became reality to myself. There's a lot of people that change who they are depending upon what people want from them. And that's, that's me. Yeah, that's important, man. Most people struggle their whole life to find out who they are struggle their whole their whole life to find out what defines them what they actually enjoy and what they don't you start putting yourself in situations that suck you'll find yourself yeah you'll find it real quick it's the only way to find yourself you don't find yourself if you like bench pressing and you bench press all the fucking time what are you finding out if you like to swim that's all you want to do is swim what are you finding out put that you know people always I, I, people talk about triple down on your fucking strengths right that's the fucking weakest shit in the world no Triple down on your fucking weaknesses.